Welcome to Black History in Upstate New York. This program was produced by Victoria Basulto in conjunction with the National Abolition Hall of Fame and Museum and funded by the Catherine W. Davis Projects for Peace Fellowship awarded through Colgate University. Black History in Upstate New York will provide a combination of bite-sized informational videos and longer presentations by scholars on historical figures and places that emphasize the crucial role Black Americans have played in the history of upstate New York. The National Abolition Hall of Fame and Museum honors anti-slavery abolitionists, their work to end slavery, and the legacy of that struggle, and strives to complete the second and ongoing abolition, the moral conviction to end racism. The Hall of Fame and Museum's contact information is available on the screen. Hello, and once again, my name is Victoria Basurto, and today I will be introducing the fascinating life of David Ruggles. This video is meant as an introduction to tomorrow's presentation by Graham Gao Russell Hodges, who will take a deep dive into the life of David Ruggles and his work in the Underground Railroad. David Ruggles was born on March 15, 1810 in Norwich, Connecticut. His childhood is critical to consider when trying to understand who he became later in life. Ruggles was born to free parents. His mother, Nancy Ruggles, was a caterer and his father, David Sr., was a blacksmith. Apart from being raised by parents who held professions and made a living through honest labor, Ruggles was also shaped by his religious education. Particularly, he was educated at religious charity schools in Norwich, which is important because Ruggles' knowledge of religion and his high literacy are both fundamental to the work he engaged in as an adult. At the age of 16, he made the monumental decision to move away from home by moving to New York City. In New York City, Ruggles will become a central figure in the state's abolitionist movement. You could also argue in the Northeastern abolitionist movement as his work often took him to other states like Pennsylvania and Massachusetts, to name a few. In 1828, he began his career as an entrepreneur by opening a grocery store at 1 Portland Street. However, the store was not just a medium for Ruggles to make a livelihood. Ruggles used his store to promote the cause of civil rights and liberty. For example, Ruggles only sold products made from free labor. This was a part of the free produce movement which was an abolitionist movement that demanded the boycott of goods produced from enslaved labor. This meant the boycott of goods like clothing, fruits and vegetables, and other goods produced from places that profited off of slavery, like slave states. Ruggles also opened and operated the first Black-owned bookstore in the U.S. This was especially important in a time in which Black people were often barred from using public libraries. Ruggles understood that literacy was a key factor in helping Black Americans fight slavery, and for those that lived in free states, the racism that they faced in their day-to-day -day from the white supremacy that was ingrained into the culture of even the states that had ended slavery. His bookstore was located on Lisbonard Street, near modern-day Tribeca neighborhood. In the same way that his grocery store was not just a method to make his livelihood, the bookstore was also another method for Ruggles to promote the cause of abolitionism. He sold abolitionist literature, which brought a lot of antagonism on him. He also wrote for numerous abolitionist newspapers like The Emancipator and published the first ever magazine produced by a black American called The Mirror of Liberty. Not only had his childhood education made him literate and therefore capable of using the power of the press to push the cause of abolitionism, but his religious education also allowed him to use his Christian knowledge to appeal to individuals outside of the abolitionist movement particularly in upstate New York, known as the Burned Over District because of the religious revival that took place there during the Second Great Awakening. For example, Ruggles used his knowledge of the Bible and appealed to the moral principles of Christianity when he wrote and published The Abrogation of the Seventh Commandment in 1835, which targeted an audience of Northern white women. Ruggles argued that Northern white women should exclude or ostracize men from their social spaces um, who kept enslaved Black women as mistresses in the South and to appeal to their Southern white equivalents to do the same. This was an especially interesting text because Ruggles was addressing women in his appeal and he was addressing them as agents of change. Ruggles also published other feminist works in his bookstore, 
like the works of Maria W. Stewart. Um, and Stewart was a free born black American who was the first black American woman to write and publish a political manifesto. She wrote various works against slavery and for women's rights across her lifetime. In addition to his business, Ruggles also served as a sales agent and consistently contributed writings for The Liberator, William Lloyd Garrison's abolitionist paper printed from Boston, and The Emancipator, another abolitionist newspaper founded by Arthur Tappan and serving as the official publication of the American Anti-Slavery Society. His work as a sales agent required him to travel around a lot in order to gain subscribers for the newspaper. This work took him to different towns, villages, and cities in upstate New York, which allowed him to become more acquainted with many abolitionists in upstate, like Garrett Smith, who we will learn a little bit more about later in this program. Later, Ruggles would also serve as a sales agent for Frederick Douglass's North Star newspaper. Ruggles' work went beyond just supporting boycott movements and abolitionist print culture. He also actively helped people liberate themselves from slavery. Ruggles was a conductor of the Underground Railroad, and he used his connections in upstate New York to help fugitives make their way to St. Catharines, Ontario, or to find work and places to live in upstate New York, as well as other Northeastern territories. In 1838, Ruggles helped Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey, who later renamed himself Frederick Douglass, by providing him with a place to stay, advice, and that is a recommendation for him to find work. Frederick Douglass was greatly influenced by Ruggles. While Douglas was staying with Ruggles, he experienced the tremendous zeal with which Ruggles fought for the freedom of others. This was especially evident in the Dard case, which I will speak a little bit about in just a few minutes. In his autobiography, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, he mentions Ruggles when he wrote the following. I had been in New York but a few days when Mr. Ruggles sought me out and very kindly took me to his boarding house at the corner of Church and Les Bernard Streets. Mr. Ruggles has been very deeply engaged in the memorable Dard case, as well as attending to a number of other fugitive slaves, devising ways and means for their successful escape. And though watched and hemmed in almost every side, he seemed to be more than a match for his enemies. The Dard case is one example of Ruggles' work to help any person who desired it reach their freedom, even if he put himself in harm's way, physical harm or legal harm. The dark case consisted of an enslaved man named Thomas Hughes, who was brought to New York City by his slave master, John P. Dark, a Virginia slaveholder in 1838. Ruggles had actively fought against the laws that permitted Southerners to bring enslaved people into the free state of New York. The law mandated that enslaved people would be free after remaining in a free state for a certain length of time. But slaveholders easily avoided this by crossing state lines into New Jersey to begin the length of time again upon their return to New York City, or they simply ignored the time limit altogether. Thomas Hughes sought the help of the Quaker abolitionist Isaac T. Hopper, but was not instantly helped. When a notice appeared in the Penny Press that Hughes had run, along, had run away along with $8,000, Isaac T. Hopper, Barney Course, and David Ruggles served as go-betweens for Hughes and Dard. They agreed that the money should be returned, though Hughes no longer had it but were firm in their conviction that Hughes should be set free. A deal was reached in which Hughes would be set free with the stipulation that the total amount of money stolen would be returned. When they failed to return the full amount, Ruggles was jailed for two days and he and his other two abolitionists were slandered in the press through a caricature. The disappointed abolitionists seen here suggested that they were extortioning enslaved people to pray from their masters and really only wanted to cash in on the reward money. However, though this case took a physical toll on Ruggles, it did not hinder him from continuing his work. In total, Ruggles claimed to have helped around 600 freedom seekers in their journey to self-emancipation. However, when he got to the point where Ruggles was nearly blind and suffering from other, other medical issues, Lydia Maria Child, the writer, abolitionist, and women's rights activist, helped him move to Northampton, Massachusetts, where he joined the Utopian Commune of Northampton Association. While there, Ruggles became interested in using hydrotherapy in order to treat his ailments. After finding success with these treatments, he established his own hydrotherapy hospital in Northampton, Massachusetts, which is now Florence, Massachusetts. And you can actually visit the, the physical space yourself in person. So a man of many firsts, Ruggles was one of the earliest practitioners of hydrotherapy in the country. 
However, Ruggles' ailing health would eventually be too much, and he passed away at the age of 39 in 1949. The immense impact that Ruggles had on the life of others, on movements like abolitionism, and in the history of our nation as a whole, is hard to believe considering how little time he had to do it. Yet Ruggles' early activism and sense of unyielding conviction that all men and women should be free and equal make him an unforgettable American hero. I only touched the surface of Ruggles' work in life and his introduction, so I highly recommend that you watch tomorrow's presentation by Graham Hodges, the writer of David Ruggles, a radical Black abolitionist and the Underground Railroad in New York City, where he will talk a little bit more in depth about the work that Ruggles did and its significance in the abolitionist movement, as well as in the development of the Underground Railroad. Apart from Dr. Hodges' book, I also recommend you check out the David Ruggles Center for History and Education website at davidrugglecenter.org so that you can learn more about David Ruggles' life and the physical space that you can visit, Ruggles' first hydrotherapy site. Additionally, please fill out the survey via the link available on your screen and also in the video description. This will allow you to provide feedback about this specific presentation or the program in general. Your feedback will help us in the formulation of future presentations and programs like this one. Thank you, and I hope we see you again tomorrow.